Welcome back to part two of our technical upgrade. Wanted to go a little more in depth, so I broke this one up into two parts. And uh, since we have the head already put together, we're gonna go ahead and do everything to install the bearing blocks and head and swash onto our models. I wanted to show these slots in the frame, uh, both the Kernel uh, and the 7HV here, for those new to it. Uh, what these do is allow any differences in height of your servos. Once the servos are attached, basically they, they set the height and then any uh, tolerances are picked up in these slots. And the same with these uh, end pieces here. You can tell that the bottoms are slotted so that you, can, you know that that is the bottom and then the tops can be tightened up. So we're going to go ahead and put these on both ends, paying attention to that and also to the position of the bearing block itself. The easy way to tell is you'll have the three screws in here holding the bearing in place. These are always going to go to the inside, meaning that this is the top and that these go down and then on the bottom, now the, uh, the screws go onto the top so that it's sandwiched in like that. And what that does is allow the the spacer here to go up against the bearing and then on the bottom the main gear will sit on the bottom one. Alright so with those loosely in with the washers on the bottom now we're ready to go ahead and mount the servos in and with the, uh, the spline you want it to face towards the bottom so we're going to install them like that. So get the top ones mounted and then you can adjust the height and go ahead and get your servos in. And for you guys running the uh, Fataba servos like I am, I have the, uh, the BLS 272 SVs. When you mount these forward like that, you need to go ahead and take a knife and just get rid of that tab that's right there so that they'll sit flush against this frame. Okay, now before we go ahead and snug all of these down permanently, we want to take our main shaft and push it through. Reason being, this is going to help square up anything that's out of whack between the top and bottoms. So when it's in the frame, it'll slide right through and go into our uh, main gear. So once it's in here, and you can go ahead and tighten these down. And now we are ready to install this back on our model. So uh, paying again close attention to, you want the ones with the washers on the bottom, the ones that were slotted on both sides. We're gonna go ahead and route the wires out of the way and we have this ready to install. And now we put some of the screws in. Alright, now with all these screws in, they are not tightened up all the way yet. They're still loose on all both sides. Again, that's so we can go ahead and put our main shaft in. Make sure it lines up. And also, we'll go ahead and put it into the bearing blocks through the, uh, the main gear and then into the bottom. And now we can go ahead, now that we know that this is straight, we can go ahead and tighten these up. and then we'll be good to go. With all these tightened now, take this out and we're ready to actually put it in permanently. So we want to take our spacer here and this goes in between our bearing blocks and then on the main shaft. So just go ahead and try to get that in. And once that's in, I know you can barely see it, 
and we can go ahead and drop our main shaft in and then we can go ahead and try to line it up with our main gear. There we go. And there we have it. Now we can go ahead and line up our uh, one-way bearing and uh, pulley here and go through the shaft with the uh, with the Jesus bolt. And I'll go ahead and uh, line that all up. And remember when you tighten that uh, bolt through there, it, it doesn't have to be tight. Just, just go ahead and snug it up. Just all it's doing is supporting the uh, main gear through the twist. There's, there's no force trying to pull it out, so it doesn't have to be in there tight. What you can end up doing is deforming the, the plastic even. So just to go ahead and draw it up, and uh, you're good to go. With the Jesus bolt tightened on the the main shaft here, what we want to do is make sure the main gear is seated all the way down before we go ahead and tighten up the other collar here. So just go ahead and push down. You can see that it's actually touching the bearing block down there. And that's where we want that. And then go ahead and tighten up that collar using your other hand to hold that up against the top. Get one done nice and tight and then just go ahead and check you want to see if you can raise or lower the main gear and you shouldn't be able to move it in either direction and you can see that we're good there so now what you can do is go ahead and take each one out individually so the one that I didn't tighten we can remove and put our Loctite on Okay, that's good. And now with this down, just gonna, since this is a conversion, it's a good time to check the, the uh, tension with the uh, motor here. Let's go ahead and make sure we got just a little gap. Everything should still be fine, but you never know what could have shifted. So that's good. All right, with a swash on, now we can go ahead and put on our head. Again, note the two holes, and it's going to go down to the uh, the top hole here, so the one farther on, and then use the supplied bolt for that. Matching lock nut. And it's always just a good practice to do it in stages, so get it a little at a time so it's even. And then there we have it. Alright, moving along, starting to look a lot more like a Kronos now. So we need to put the uh, fly barless drivers on, swash drivers. And these come pre-assembled. These are the, the same like on the 6HV and uh, you have the, the bolts here the same. And there's a little washer that's going to go on either side and the, the bearings of course in here and in between there's a, a brass sleeve that goes in between the two to support it and the other thing is these are directional there's a, a more rounded side kind of looks like an airfoil going to act as an airfoil as well but the, the the brunt side is going to go on the leading edge so facing forward and that's the side that the bolt is going to go through with the uh, washer on. And then the next thing is the length. And per the manual, these are supposed to be 77.5 millimeters. All right, 77.6. That's good enough for me for right now. We may have to make a fine tune adjustment to get our zero pitch on my model. We'll take a look at that later. I'm going to go ahead and make sure this one's the same length, and then we're going to go ahead and install these. Okay, we're going to go ahead and size these real quick before we put them on the model. So make sure that this is the back side. And to put these on, it takes quite a bit of force. So I just push it down against the hard surface, and then you can go ahead and do your uh, loosening here. 
Doesn't have to be crazy, just a little bit takes the edge off, makes these things a lot easier to go on, especially once they're on the swash. I'm going to go ahead and pop that off. Put a Loctite on, make sure the direction's the right way. You got our washers on. Alright, so loose. Alright, now the play is gone. So just one thing to keep in mind is that you want to be able to tighten this up. And this one took quite a bit of force, um, but you don't want any end-to-end -end play. And you still want it to be nice and free. So we're good on that one. I actually take a wooden block and press against it. And then it snaps on. You can see it's still free. Because we went ahead and sized them. So they go on rather hard, but they are not coming off. Okay, the last thing that we really need to do is go ahead and get the servo links put on. And here's the old one. And here's the new one. And these have the heavy duty uh, links on them. And you also you use the existing uh, metal rods from the 7HV. And you just go ahead and take the old ones off and put these new ones on, which I highly recommend. I've switched these over on my 6HVU for this season. And they've been working out really well. And these are going to be a little bit longer than the ones I had on mine. Uh, the instructions... As you'll see, they want 36.5 in the center, and that's what I have this one set to. Or on the outside, it's uh, 78 from the top to bottom. On the servo horns, these are the old ones from my 7HV, um, but also you want to mount the servo balls on the inside for the elevator for the one in the back. And then for all the rest, they're going to be mounted on the outside, so the opposite direction facing away from the servo. And that is what they recommend. With all of the links sized up and uh, tightened down to the right length, I went ahead and found that if you put these on the servo arm first, it makes this a lot easier to do. It's a little hard to get at on the uh, model, especially um, with this being pretty hard to put on so what I recommend is go ahead and putting that on first and then putting this on your servo and if you go ahead and turn on your radio and level your swash go to your trim mode or whatever you need to do and you can just go ahead and make sure this is as close to 90 as possible and then go ahead and put this back up on your swash and to mount this I just go ahead and put it up here on the swash. And using a plier or vice grips, go ahead and just put in a squeeze on that and using the back side of the swash plate. Once that's on, you can go ahead and mount our anti-rotation bracket from your old model and go ahead and tighten this up. They now have the two plastic pieces here, the spacers, instead of the washers. And they're gonna go on your grips, top and bottom, just like on the tail blades. Go ahead and mount your blades up. And we are all set. And what you're gonna wanna do is basically treat this as a new model when you set it up. So go through your fly bar list, you're going to recenter the, re-level the swash, and for this one, uh, I don't have anything special for a 14 millimeter shaft, but this thing's so large, you can go ahead and just eyeball it, get it close, and that should be good enough. 
Go ahead and set your pitch again. Make sure your eight degrees is all set. That's going to be a little bit different than the last model, of course. It's been a pleasure making this vid for you guys. I do hope you enjoy it. Any other uh, questions, just go ahead and let me know. Enjoy your build and enjoy the hobby. Thanks, guys.